Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I had to make this video after making the last one about Jacob Fouts. 98% of y'all, awesome. Yeah, even if you disagree with me, that's fine. We can have those discussions. But one word said he find one dude said he finally found my page and I'm a tool. Uh, asked him why. You can offer my phone number. You can debate me. Nothing. Now what he said, my my, my thought process was too short term. Um, another guy said anybody with live scope in the name has to be a, and I'll spell it out, T-W-A-T, which is a horrible word. Horrible word. It's, it's like using the C word. It's a horrible word. Uh, I had a couple more guys pile on that bandwagon uh, um, right there. And uh, most of them are, are along the terms or along the line of he was just saying how the current state is of professional basketball. No, it was not. Everybody has known how the current state of professional basketball has been like that forever. That's why anglers come and go. Uh, they fish for a few years. If you're not successful or aren't able to get the sponsorship to go to the next level, you go. As a matter of fact, there's a, and, I, and I'm not real sure of his name, he has a podcast on Chris Saldane's podcast. He's the lawyer for, uh, he's a lawyer, he practices law, and he's out of Washington, he's in the Elite Series. He will tell you that if you rely on this as your sole source of income, the actual tournament series, you're, you're, you're sadly mistaken, it's not going to happen. I mean, if you look at the average winnings, okay, $10,000 down to whatever, 40th place or whatever. Seven, eight tournaments, that's 100. You know, seven, let's just say eight tournaments. If you finish that top 40 every time, eight tournaments, $80,000. That's if you didn't get anything but the $10,000 check. Um, you know, I, I, I could do this on a shoestring budget. I, I don't understand it. Maybe guys look at it in a different way than me, you know, but even if you won $80,000, and that's a lot to say to finish in the top 40 every single time, you know, that's not what happens. I would say just half the, you know, on average, guys probably finish, what, five out of four out of the tournaments. So you won $40,000. Um, you're, you're looking at breaking even. I mean, you got to do the math on this. I mean, you got to do the math and say, if I broke even on it, you know, if I only finish four tournaments in the top ten, I'm, uh, if you're counting on a win, you're, you're counting, man, the wins are tough to get. They're tough to get in uh, Tuesday night tournaments. They're tough to get in your club tournaments. You know, so you go to somebody's lake, that's their lake. They win. I mean, that's just facts. That's just facts. Um, I, I don't understand where a guy, you, you can't count on wins. So you'd have to look at the tournament elite series as a chance to break into a realm of tackle sponsors that you may not be able to get to. And, and I don't understand how I'm a tool for saying this because uh, uh, I pointed out the obvious. Now, there's no way, and I've said this a couple different times, but there's no way that Jacob Fouts fish three years at a job or, or go to a job for three years and have zero income. And what I mean by zero income is spend 40000 make 40000 that's zero income. You haven't done that. If you claim your taxes, you make zero income. You spend all the money you made. You, you, didn't, you didn't make any money. So there's no way for three years he can do this unless he had two different things. He had a major financial backer or had a little nest egg. Maybe mom and daddy, grandma, somebody like that that had, he had some money. So maybe he is true. Maybe it is true that he's not, he's just breaking even. But how in the world can you continue to go to a job for three years? That's stupidity. Heck, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't going for about two months. I ain't going for a month. If I know that I'm spending $20 to get the gas, just hypothetically, or let's just say I spent a 
tank of gas to get to work. I have to get up every morning, drive five hours to go to work, and I spend a whole tank of gas. And by the time I buy some food and all that, I come back home and I've spent 10 hours and I made zero dollars, clear zero dollars. I'm gonna do that about one day. First of all, I'm not stupid enough to, to not, I'm not stupid enough to uh, to do that over and over. That's stupidity. It's, it's, it's simple ignorance to think that you would go to a job and clear money. So he knew exactly what he was gonna clear, if he had any sense at all. He, he did the figure and he did the, uh, uh, he checked all the numbers and he knew that the Elite Series is just simply a stepping stone to the part of the career or the kind of money you wanna to get to. Uh, go, go look at Gerald Swindle, go look at Kevin Van Dam, um, and Chris Aldane is one of the ones, Lee Livesey, yeah, Lee won a couple tournaments, but he didn't do so good in some of the other ones. But he has a business plan, and he's talked very extensively about his business plans. Um, a lot of them uh, get a boat, um, not all, not all. Some guys get a boat at a discounted price, um, which is most of them. And then they sell that boat. Um, I can remember Mark Daniels Jr. And I'm sure he probably gets a boat. He's in that upper little echelon, but maybe he doesn't. And he said that that boat sale is his major source of income for the year. And then you add in all the other sponsorships. And that's how he makes his living. And bonus tournament winnings are a bonus. Wins tournaments or does good in all the tournaments, he, he comes out with a bonus. If he doesn't, but when I when you watch a lot of these guys, for example, let's go with Brandon Pollard. Man, he slept in the back of his truck. He wanted it. He went and got it, and he fished his way up, and he earned his way from the bottom, and he used the Elite Series as a stepping stone. And now he would, I would literally say, he's one of the top ten in terms of sponsorships, sponsorship dollars. And things like that but he and now he drives around uh, he's got one truck pulling his boat one truck pulling the, the, uh, the RV or uh, camper whatever you want to call it he's got one guy one pulling that but he worked from sleeping in a camper and in a tent in the back of his truck up to that he had to work for that so he used it as a, a stepping stone through the Federation and, and so on and so forth. So he knew what he was getting into and he had a business plan set in place. You started winning. Winning uh, breeds, you know, winning breeds success. Success breeds success. And then people started not, you know, he was using the lures he was using. Those sponsorships came. And then uh, from those, bigger sponsorships came and so forth and so on. You know, there, there's an old saying, you do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Very true. It was even true in bass fishing. So for somebody to call me a tool uh, for that, for simply stating it, you, you, okay, Jacob, he was telling how it is. Everybody knew how it was. Everybody sees the winnings. You can look at the winnings. And, uh, okay, um, he said, Nobody's knocking down my door. I would call people. Yeah, you know what? It happens. I probably, you know how many times I've contacted Garmin to try to do some kind of sponsorship deal? They don't ever mess me back. Or I've had some people say, well, you know, we're really interested. And I never, never goes to me. It didn't make me stop doing the Garmin Guru page. It didn't do anything. It just made me keep working at it. I just keep working. And then... I'm to the point kind of now where I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to put somebody, unless somebody gives me something substantial, I'm not putting nothing on my hat. So what do you see when you see my hat? Do you see a GG hat? Uh, this is a logging company that I used to own. Um, I'm not advertising other people. I advertise myself. I advertise my brand. Until somebody wants to pay some big bucks for me to advertise for Garmin, yeah, you ain't gonna see a Garmin hat on me. So I made that decision. I'm not upset with it. But I also know maybe one day I could make a living off the, the, the Garmin Guru page. Maybe not. Maybe. One day if I get to 150,000 subscribers, it may be enough money to to uh, pay 
the bills a little bit. Maybe not. But if I was, my whole purpose and was, or my whole source of income was the Garmin Guru page and I was just breaking even, guess what? I'd stop doing it and move on to something else. Um, I understand he thinks he made it to the Elite Series and that's supposed to carry some weight. No, it just opened the doors to the next step. It uh, opened the doors to the to the uh, to the to the next deal. He said, "Well, here, I didn't get no money." But then also, the first thing he talks about was losing sponsorships and losing his boat deal. Why would you care about losing a boat deal if you, if you weren't getting any money from them or, or getting a discount on your boat, uh, so forth and so on? Um, and, and what gets me? kind of got me more than anything was the high number of professional anglers that were like good job buddy way to be brave you created your brand and I'm like what in the world are y'all talking about of course y'all are like that y'all are on that side of the fence who uh, and and when I say this they, they think because they made it to the elites and this this is all going into the FLW cut I mean FLW MLF cutting um, you know, anglers and anglers crying because they lost their, you know, their 78th in points and they're going to get cut. I mean, Andre Agassi, one of the greatest tennis players of all time, he had to go down to the Challenger Series and fight his way back up to the ATP Series. And then he went on to have the back half of his career was amazing. He didn't cry, he didn't whine, he just went to work. He just went to work. I mean, he wasn't making no money in that Challenger series, which is like a minor league series. I mean, it's nothing. So, Jacob can shut up whining or go to work. You can't say you hate people and then want sponsors. That's what sponsorship is about, is being a people person. Does it mean you're not going to get along with somebody? Yeah. Does it mean you're going to have problems? Yes, you're still going to have problems. Um, does it mean you're going to get with a company that you don't like them after a while? And you're like, yes, it happens all the time. But in order to open the doors to a, the next one, you may have to, you know, if, 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 I don't know, if Shakespeare wants to call you and say they want to sponsor you with reels and give you a couple of dollars, you do it. If that, if you're looking for the money, you're looking, you do it. You, you work with them maybe to create a great brand of reels, and then other companies say, "God, man, he just took this twenty-five dollar reel and made it, and, and is selling it like it's a million dollars. We got to have this guy, and so forth, and so on, and so on, and it builds and it builds and it builds. But you look three or four years into it." And, and apparently you didn't do the math. I hope you did the math. I'm smart enough to do that. And you realized, holy crap, I can't live off tournament winnings. Just do the All you got to do is do a little figuring, do a little work, do a little looking. Um, that's it. You buy a $1,200 truck. I hope you've done the $1,200 a month truck. I hope you've done the work and the figuring to see if you can afford it on your income. I hope so. Obviously you haven't. So... Yes, I mean, I mean he, 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 he messed himself up. Don't go whining about how it is. You should always be looking at, if you go, if you, if you look fish these tournament trails, it's a bonus. It's not making a living from them, it's a bonus. The sponsorship deals, the uh, expo deals, the, 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 the incredible, 